Hello, best ever listeners. Welcome to the best real estate investing advice ever show. I'm Ash Patel, and I'm with today's guest, Mehdi Kachani. Mehdi is joining us from Miami Beach, Florida. He is the CEO of JMK Group, which is a vertically integrated company that has a brokerage, contracting, property management, and investment team focused on multifamily syndication. Mehdi's portfolio consists of being a GP on 62 doors, Mehdi, thank you for joining us, and how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Ash. Awesome, man. Great to have you here. Before we get started, can you give the best ever listeners a little bit more about your background and what you're focused on now? Sure. So I'm, uh, my background, essentially, I'm originally from Morocco. I moved to uh, the U.S. in Canada first, and then the U.S. in 1999, and I've been uh, here since then. I love real estate. I'm very passionate about it. Uh, we founded with my wife uh, the JMK Group Company, which started with a property management business um, about 10 years ago. And then we added to it the general contracting business, the brokerage, and uh, the investment. And uh, we are also real estate investors. And uh, through our investments, we were able to generate enough rental income to essentially achieve financial freedom. And, and now we're, we have the opportunity to uh, focus on the business and, and grow it. Many, most people outsource property management and that's where you started. Why was that? Honestly, we lived in a building that was that we thought would be managed better. So we offered the ownership of that building to start doing the management and they, they believed in our ability to do so. And that's how it all started. Um, and then, what was that conversation like? Uh, that's very interesting. Actually, it's, I, I prepared a PowerPoint presentation. And uh, at the time, I was still working. Uh, I had the W-2, and, and uh, I, was, uh, I had more of a corporate profile. <laughs> so uh, what I needed to do is uh, get a PowerPoint presentation together. And I went through what we could deliver for the building and, and they loved it. They eventually, it was also a decision based on relationship. Uh, they knew us on a day-to-day -day basis and they said, okay, let's do this. All right, and they fired their property management company and hired you? Yes. All right. I mean, the, we were on site, we were living in the property and that was also a huge, very appealing to them. What were the challenges you encountered in doing that? Okay, so the first property, this property that I mentioned, it's a homeowner association. So it's a bunch of condominium in, a, in, in one structure. A lot of fun meetings. <laughs> yeah, we, we started with the property, with the HOAs, and then eventually we were focusing exclusively on multifamily apartment buildings now and commercial properties. But uh, the, the challenge is having too many cooks in, in, in the kitchen. Uh, people having different agendas. Uh, some people not wanting to spend a dime on the building and others wanting to make the building the next greatest thing uh, without thinking about uh, what they're spending. And so reconciling all of that and uh, was what could have been, it was challenging to some degree and getting people to, uh, uh, you know, unite behind the project and the plan. That was for that specific property, the, the challenge. Well, that's interesting. What advice would you give somebody that is dealing with an HOA? How, I mean, how do they navigate the totally different sides of people? Uh, well, I'm going to be very, very direct on this one. First of all, unless it's your primary residence, I don't recommend buying a condo. <laughs> uh, but if I wanted the building to uh, to shape the direction of the building, I, I would definitely get engaged, uh, be on the board and, and listen to conversations. You have to be a very good listener and figure out what where people stand and then try to find consensus. But uh, if in terms of investments, I, I, I don't think uh, condominiums are a good asset class. Uh, and one of the things that happen uh, when you are part of the condo is you can get hit by a special assessment. You have very little con control over the asset. So, yeah. Well, my question was more, if somebody was in your shoes, 
where they were the property manager and had to deal with the condo association, what advice would you give them? Be a good listener and build relationships. All right. Try not to get, try not to have a target on your back, right? All right. So what was your next step after you started managing this property? So then once we had that one property under management, we, we went to other buildings and we told them, look, we, we managed this one property. Uh, the board is very happy with us. These are all the great things we, we've done for the property in terms of managing costs and, and improving the tenant base and uh, all that good stuff. And then eventually we, we, we started attracting more properties uh, under management. And what we quickly realized is that for property management company, managing HOAs, at least from our experience, hasn't been very profitable and it's a high, it's resource intensive. And you mentioned the meetings, the board meetings. When you manage an HOA, there, there is a lot of bureaucracy in making any type of decisions. Instead of dealing with the group of investors that own the entire building, you're, you're dealing with individual owners of condominiums. So we shifted very quickly our strategy and focused on apartment buildings. How did you acquire more apartments to manage? So that's a very good question. I mean, uh, we did uh, Google ads. Uh, I thought that was one. And in, we were on Yelp. Uh, those were, and then we joined uh, an association of property managers. And then word of mouth. People were happy with the work we, we've done. A lot of the owners, some of the owners actually in the buildings we managed owned condominiums in other buildings. So they would tell us, hey, this is not a building that, I'm, uh, that I belong to. And I think it would improve our property management. Do you want to take us on? Uh, I would like to introduce you to the board. And when then we would meet the board and, and present our services. What do you see a lot of property managers doing wrong? Oh, that's a very good question. It's... I, I think, first of all, just to put things in perspective, at least from my perspective, having been in day-to-day -day of a property manager, it's an extremely challenging job. So your audience, well, uh, my recommendation is uh, hire third-party property management instead of being involved yourself because you, you the, the, the return on your time is, is gonna be very, very limited. It's a resource intensive, business with very, very small margins. Um, but uh, what I, I think property managers do what they can with the resources that are available to them. Um, I, I think the way to run a property, uh, properly a property management company is to charge pro adequately because a lot of property managers, it's a low barrier, low uh, barrier to entry uh, uh, type of business. So anybody can do that. And, and what happens is property managers uh, go offer their services at a, at a very low rate. And as a result, they stretch themselves too thin and have to manage too many buildings uh, at once per property manager. The ratio of property managers to buildings is it's not good. So as a result, they're not delivering the, the good level of service. Mehdi, in your area, what is the going rate for PMs and what do you charge? Hmm. That's a very good question. So would, for, are we talking about apartment buildings or yes. would you say condominium associations? Uh, no, just apartments. Going rates, I mean, we start at uh, 5 6% and up. Uh, depending on the size of the building. Obviously, if you have a uh, bigger property, economies of scale, then we're willing to negotiate that rate. But uh, the minimum we charge is 5 6%. And that's what you charge? Yeah. Okay, so you're in line with all your competition. We're in line, but we're very, I mean... What makes you better? better? What makes us very better? Customer service and technology. So we... Customer service, we're boutique property management. So when we take a customer, we are not seeing that customer just as a transaction. We're seen as a partnership. Actually, we, we have clients that we invest with on their deals. And that's how committed we are. We, we really want to establish strategic partnerships with the people we take on board. And when 
customers interview us, we also interviewing them. We're, we, we're very selective and we want to see a fit uh, between our company and, 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 uh, and the client. Uh, aside from that, technology is essential. Uh, like I mentioned, it's resource intensive. You have to be very, very strategic in terms of how you allocate your resources and technology helps us uh, build efficiencies and work more effectively and deliver very good service with uh, fewer resources. What specific technology have you implemented? Huh. So, I mean, definitely the software you use, the property management software is a big one. And what uh, do you use? Appfolio. Uh, okay. That's worked out very well for us. In terms of uh, maintenance, we have in-house, we've created an operation, a maintenance operation, and that's because we're also a licensed, in the state of Florida, we're a licensed general contractor and uh, plumbing company. So the plumbing maintenance has its own software for dispatching uh, technicians. We um, also use uh, uh, web-based applications that help us uh, gather data from uh, customers and address their needs. We leverage also um, JotForm, which is a, a tool that's worked out very well for us to uh, gather data for specific requests and turn those uh, requests into actionable deliverables. And you have in-house trade people? Yes, we do. Is it, is it just a pain point that uh, you got tired of paying high prices and waiting for them to be free? Huh. I, <laughs> I, it's a mix, but definitely I think the same way property management was a pain point for us, and then, by, by the way, I didn't mention it, but we did also own our own properties that we put under management through the company. But um, aside from that, we also saw it as a, an opportunity for uh, incremental income. Uh, there is a massive demand for uh, uh, home services in general. Uh, we do remodels, bathroom remodels, kitchen remodels, and all of that is in-house. So, all right. So you do that for single family homeowners, single family homeowners for apartment buildings. We do a lot of commercial. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And so it's a separate business, by the way, it's a completely yeah. separate business. That business, the general contracting business has maintenance operation that we leverage for the property management. But in Miami, just one quick comment in Miami, it's specifically, and maybe it's a problem nationwide, but I think it's particularly the case in Miami. If you call a vendor and he shows up, you feel very fortunate, very lucky. <laughs> and customers have told us that this is not only from us. Yeah, it's a common problem now. And also there's a lot of property managers that just suck. So finding a good one. <laughs> is, uh, yeah. Um, so many, I've only heard of very large property managers investing in people's deals. Explain that dynamic to me. It's, it's nice to see a smaller boutique PM company also investing in people's deals, are you investing as they're taking them down or do you get equity later on for managing the property? No, no, we, we invest as they take down. We, we actually bring in our own cash into the deal and we get an equity. There, we have preferential rate because of the relationship, uh, but we, we go in. We find that the deal makes sense. The sponsor has done a good job. We want to show that we have skin in the game. And we also manage the property. Yeah. And do you also bring in other investors? Do you help them raise capital? Yeah. So our business is uh, composed of four businesses, the GC, the brokerage, the property management, and, and the investment. On the investment side, we do two things. We find deals and we uh, raise money. Uh, we have brought uh, raise money for our, uh, for sponsors. We've joined GP uh, groups as uh, yeah, and brought in brought in all our expertise to the table, and all it right. adds also more credibility to them as they try to uh, pitch their deals. That's great. I love that model. You're a one stop shop. You're you're the partner that we want. <laughs> Good for you. Do you manage commercial buildings as well? Yes. And when I say commercial, non residential commercial. Yeah, we do retail, we do commercial offices, we do industrial. We, we're very local though, uh, primarily Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami-Dade County, but 
in terms of the investments, we're, we, we do the Southeast of the U.S. And you personally putting money, do you, would you rather invest in multifamily or non-residential, commercial, industrial? It's interesting. So far, you know, the 62 units that you mentioned, those are units that we own. Uh, fully, uh, me and my wife were the founders of the company. Uh, then, um, in terms of, uh, we're, we're primarily focused on multifamily. That's kind of our area of expertise in terms of investment, but we're looking to diversify into commercial. Uh, we haven't gone there yet uh, for is investment because, purposes. Is it because you see the higher returns in commercial? Yes, Ash, from my perspective, let me see, it's maybe my uh, self-limiting belief, you know, but uh, I do have the impression that you need to have stronger financial means, so, because if you have vacancy, it can carry, it can be a heavier lift to carry, uh, weight to carry. Uh, on a commercial property versus uh, multifamily. Multifamily, you own a 50-unit building, you lose a few tenants. First of all, there's no vac vacancy; is, is very small now. But uh, yeah, it's 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 the the risk is much lower from our perspective. Yeah, you're right. the The risk is lower, but you're capped by your comps. Right? You can only do so much in renovations. And at some point you reach a ceiling on what you could charge for rent. Whereas with commercial, yes, there's the risk of vacancy, but if you fill, if, if you buy a center that has a couple of vacancies and you fill them, you've added a massive amount of money to your NOI, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you can increase uh, a commercial lease, you don't have to do renovations. Matter of fact, your tenants will often do the renovations for you on their dime, right? Absolutely. So um, I, I'm primarily a non-residential commercial investor. So industrial office, retail, warehouse. Um, and I, the ability to increase NOI is much greater in those asset classes than it is with multifamily. And also cap barriers to entry. Yeah. And now, cap, rates, cap rates are more attractive too than mm -hmm. residential. Yeah. I've, um, I've interviewed people that have bought in hot markets residential real estate at two and a half caps you'll never hear of a commercial deal going for a two and a half cap matter of fact you can still find eight cap deals on loopnet and crexy yes uh, yeah uh, but ash the when you say residential is it less than five units or uh no, or no, no. Uh, multi-family okay like 20 million dollar uh, apartment yeah. complexes at two and a half caps Right. And I mean, that's. No, no, I, I understand of... your point. I, absolutely. The only thing I would say is when you, you, when the price of the asset is based on comparables, that's where I think you have no control, right? The, if you, you own a house or building up to four units, then you can invest whatever you want into the property. Your price is going to be capped by how much your neighbors have sold the property. But yeah. as soon as you go to commercial residential, I mean, multifamily of five or more, then you have some form of control. Your net operating income is going to determine uh, the value of your property, assuming uh, the cap rate is constant. Yes, I agree with you. Now, how do you increase NOI? Okay, so either you manage, you run it better, you manage your expenses, or you increase uh, rents. And the rents is determined by the market. Yeah, and often through, renovations, forced appreciation, dog parks, covered parking, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Now, the beauty of commercial real estate, and I thank you for having this debate with me, but the beautiful, the beautiful thing about commercial real estate, and again, when I say commercial, the best ever listeners know it's non-residential commercial. Um, you can take a mom and pop convenience store, and if they leave and you sign a dollar general to a 10-year lease, you've now changed that cap rate a mom and pop store is going to go, you know, eight and a half, nine cap. A dollar general is trading at four and a half cap, right? So just there, if all things are equal, you've dramatically increased the 
the, the, the value of the property. And often dollar generals are just going to pay more in rent than a typical mom and pop. Right. So yeah. you could have potentially added a million dollars to the value of the building through that forced depreciation, not only in NOI, but in cap rate as well. Right. We're not bound by cap rates due to comps. We are based on similar tenants. So national, national tenants is, yeah. typically trade, trade the same the cap, rate. cap rate. Uh, mom and pops trade at the similar cap rate. But, you know, increasing from a mom and pop tenant to a regional or to a national tenant dramatically reduces your cap rate. So I encourage you, man, keep, uh, keep diving into that. And, uh, you know, uh, you can you start for the yeah. education session, because honestly, this is inspiring for me to hear. But Maddie, you know, a lot of people think commercial is too expensive and almost in any market, I can find you a commercial building. It could be a mixed use building that's priced the same as uh, a single family house right? I mean, you could find older mixed use buildings that have, you know, one retail, a couple apartments above. And that's a good way to get your feet wet with commercial real estate. Because often those apartments will pay for all of your expenses and the profit comes from the commercial or vice versa. Right? So push yourself, man. Listen, you've built a great company. Uh, you've expanded into things that most people probably wouldn't have. So keep going. You're on, you're on the right trajectory. I love it. And thank you for inspiring me to go into commercial. I assure you next time we, we talk. Yeah, I'll man, listen, find your next, done something in this find, space. find a commercial deal and let's come back and uh, revisit. We'll have another conversation. <laughs> hey, this was Absolutely. a great conversation, man. Give us your best real estate investing advice ever. Okay. So, I, 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 there are many things that come to mind. I, I think I'm going to do one that's a little bit more generic in the sense that it's helped me personally. You want to surround yourself with people that have achieved what you want to do in the future. Like, for example, hearing what you've done, uh, Ash, on the commercial side, I, I definitely want to, want, want to replicate or uh, see how you've been successful. But that, that would be my, uh, my advice. Just surround yourself with people that are ahead of the game uh, in terms of, and are doing what you want to be doing. That, that can, uh, proximity, like Tony Robbins says, uh, yeah. it goes a very long way. Incredible advice. And uh, Mehdi, and the last thing that I'll touch on is uh, managing commercial properties. It's still four or 5% property management fee. However, you're dealing with professional business owners versus tenants. And often we manage most of our commercial properties ourselves because once you have your systems in place, there's nothing to do. If there's a plumbing backup, it's usually on the tenant to handle, right? Um, so a lot of things just fall on the tenants and you don't get a phone call every time a sink is clogged, right? Absolutely. So awesome, man. Are you ready for the best ever lightning round? Let's do it. All right. Matty, what's the best ever book you recently read? Best ever book I recently read, uh, Vivid Vision, a uh, great book. I actually, it's the second time I read it, but uh, it's, it's a great book about establishing a vision and working towards that. Matty, what's the best ever way you like to give back? Time. Um, but most recently, we've done uh, launch initiatives in uh, the properties that we own, where we offered the uh, office supplies to uh, the kids who live in our buildings. Uh, a lot of our buildings are workforce buildings, so that was a very nice way for us to get involved in the community and, and, and give back. And I also brought my own kids uh, to buy the supplies and then distribute them, which was uh, uh, yeah, a beautiful experience overall. That's a great touch. And Manny, how can the best ever listeners reach out to you? They can go on my website, www.jmkpropertyinvestment.com. My email is medi at jmkpropertyinvestment.com. And uh, yeah, if any of your listener needs help or wants to use our services, I'm all here. Medi, thank you again for your time today, man. Coming here in 99 uh, from Canada 
through way of, sorry, from Morocco through way of Canada and kind of by accident getting into the property management business just because you thought you could do something better and then building a great business out of it. Thank you for sharing your story with us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Hash, for having me and for the opportunity. Yes, sir. Best ever listeners, thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a five-star review. Share the podcast with someone you think can benefit from it. Also, follow, subscribe, and have a best ever day. Bye.